This is not what the movement of the solar system actually looks like. More like this, but not really. In this video, you will find out how you are really moving through space, and I promise you, it will really blow your mind. So be sure to stay tuned until the end, and if you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thank you, friends, and welcome. Everything is in motion. This sentence applies above all to space. Let's just take the movement of our Earth around the Sun. The Earth races around our star at an average speed of 30 kilometers per second. So just since this video began, we have already raced hundreds of kilometers around the Sun. Truly incredible. And most depictions of the solar system, such as the one you can see here, are limited to this movement of the planets around the Sun. But that's not all because we also have to take into account the movement of the entire solar system within the galaxy. The Milky Way. Our Milky Way is our cosmic home and consists of at least 100 billion star systems. However, most estimates now assume that there are even more than 200 billion. Our solar system is one of them, and all these stars are in a kind of galactic dance, a rhythm known as the galactic year. They orbit around the center of the Milky Way, and it takes our solar system 225 million years to complete one orbit. At a speed of around 200 kilometers per second. At the beginning of this galactic year, dinosaurs still existed on Earth. In view of this galactic orbit, one could imagine the movement of the solar system as shown here. Although the planets move around the sun, they follow it on their way around the center of the galaxy. When you see it like this, it can make your head spin. And somehow the thought is really fascinating. You're never in the same place when you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll be in a completely different part of the Milky Way. Unbelievable. But you've probably already guessed it. That's not all. Please stop, I'm getting dizzy. The universe doesn't end beyond our galaxy. There are billions of other galaxies, and most of them are arranged in so-called galaxy clusters, which in turn form superclusters. Within our galaxy cluster, the local group, different galaxies and dwarf galaxies gravitationally attract each other. The strongest effect here is the attraction between our Milky Way and the even larger Andromeda galaxy. The two are hurtling towards each other at this very moment and will merge to form a super galaxy in a few billion years. So we also have to factor the approach of the Andromeda galaxy into our movement. The two galaxies and we as part of the Milky Way are moving towards each other at around 109 kilometers per second. But as already mentioned, there are other galaxy clusters and they also influence us with their immense gravity. The other galaxies and galaxy clusters in our vicinity all exert a gravitational pull on us, and even far, far away clusters of matter in deep space still exert a gravitational force. From what we can calculate, all these distant structures together seem to cause an additional motion of about 300 kilometers per second. However, in a slightly different direction than the other motions. Truth. So all these movements add up to quite a lot. So the next time someone asks you if you've done enough exercise, you can just answer. I pedometer says I've moved thousands of kilometers in the last five seconds. Perfect. <coughs> but there is another movement that hardly anyone has on their radar. And it's caused by the great emptiness. And I don't mean the one in some people's heads. So for every atom or particle of matter in the universe that clusters together in an over-dense region, like regions with lots of galaxy clusters, there are also regions that have lost the same amount of mass, just as a region that is denser than average will exert more gravity. A region that is less dense than average will exert correspondingly less gravity. If you have a large region of space with less matter than the average, the lack of gravity acts as a repulsive force and the extra gravity acts as an attractive force. 
In our cosmic neighborhood, there is a large void with low density opposite the place of greatest overdensity in our vicinity. Since we are between these two regions of density, the attractive and repulsive forces add up, each one being about 300 km per second and the total approaching 600 km per second. So, broadly speaking, these are the factors that influence our movement through the cosmos. I can already hear some of you asking nervous questions. But what kind of speed does that give us overall? This is extremely dependent on the reference point, and that's why none of the depictions of the movement of the solar system were completely wrong or completely right. It simply depends on what you relate it to. If you add up all these movements, i.e. the rotation of the Earth itself, the rotation of the Earth around the Sun, the movement of the Sun around the galactic center, the movement of the Milky Way, and the others with the galaxy towards each other, and the local group that is attracted by the more dense regions and repelled by the less dense ones, you get a figure for how fast we are actually moving through the universe at any given time. And the total motion is 368 kilometers per second in a given direction, plus or minus about 30 kilometers per second, depending on what time of year it is and which direction the Earth is moving. Now I need your help. If you're good at math, calculate how many kilometers we've moved through space at this moment since the beginning of the video and write it in the comments. I'm super bad at math, so I'm counting on you guys. Incidentally, this can also be confirmed by the measurements of the cosmic microwave background, i.e. the high energy radiation from the early days of the universe. The cosmic microwave background appears hotter in the direction in which we are moving and colder in the direction opposite to our movement. However, if we no longer take our solar system as a reference point, but the local group, for example, then we can calculate that our group of galaxies, i.e. the Milky Way, Andromeda, Triangulum Galaxy and all the dwarf galaxies is moving at around 727 kilometers per second relative to the cosmic microwave background. Quintessence. It depends extremely on the perspective. No representation is completely right or completely wrong, as in discussion with other people. Unless the other person is a flat earther, then he's a complete idiot. So our solar system is a kind of cosmic cue ball that is bounced back and forth by all kinds of gravitational influences, and all in all it makes for a beautiful cosmic dance. It's a really fascinating thought that we alone have undertaken an incredible journey through space together since the beginning of the video and are now not only in a different place in the galaxy, but at a completely different point in the universe as the Milky Way has also moved in the meantime. But now let's move just as quickly to one of the most fascinating objects in the solar system, the Sun. NASA has observed how a piece of the Sun has broken off, no joke. Take a look at the incredible original footage in the video below. It's very exciting. And if you want to support my work, treat yourself to the shirts from the videos and much more in my space store. Every purchase helps me to keep the channel going. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.